Hi guys, good morning. Um, today the topic on RAW is about mandibular fractures. Um, you guys know me, I'm Dr. Satya Bama. And today we're only talking about the mandibular fracture in detail, okay? We know mandible, if you look at it, is a horseshoe shaped structure. Now that is the coronoid process, the condylar process, the dentoalveolar process. So this becomes your ramus, that's the angle and the body. You have your mental foramen through which the mental nerve comes out, starting from the inferior alveolar nerve, which is the mandibular foramen up here. So, now when you're looking at these fractures, we're looking at where and how these fractures work and what kind of forces are acting on them. There is a zone of tension that is act acting along the dental alveolar segment. We have a zone of compression that acts on the lower border of the mandible. Now, because this is a horseshoe shaped structure, not a long bone, horseshoe shaped. So you will have some amount of rotational forces where the mandible is turning, okay? So from the canine, from the canine on one side, the third quadrant to the canine on the opposite side, we have the torsional forces or the rotational forces. So we have a zone of tension, a zone of compression and torsional forces acting on the mandible. Let's go into the anatomy, not in detail, but you know, to know, understand what kind of forces are acting on the mandible. Now, we call these the muscles of mastication, starting with your mesitor, which is there on either side on the lateral aspect of your ramus. Then you have your medial pterygoid, which is on the medial surface of the ramus. Your lateral pterygoids, okay, then your temporalis, your mylohyoid muscle, which is actually the floor of the mouth your geniohyoid and genion. Remember the genial tubercles that you have on the anterior part of the mandible on the medial aspect? Now those are the genial tubercles, okay? So from there you have the geniohyoid, genial tubercle to the hyoid bone, genial tubercle to the tongue, to the glossum, which is the genioglossus muscle and the anterior belly of digastric and the posterior belly of digastric that all of us know, these are, that's, that forms a belly here, okay? All right. So the next one is about the blood supply. Uh, most often, you know, the uh, blood supply to the mandible comes from the endosteal blood supply, which is the inferior alveolar artery and its vessels, okay? There is some amount of blood supply coming from the periosteum, with the per periosteum that's covering the entire mandible gives some supply as well, which gets diminished as we age and, and that actually compromises and compensates for the endosteal supply which completely reduces as the aging progresses. The nerve obviously is the inferior alveolar nerve, all of us know it's part of the mandibular nerve and um, we're not going to talk about the facial nerve and other things out here. Right, so how do I go about classifying this fracture and what are the common causes of these fractures? Direct trauma, somebody hits you directly from, from the uh, side or from in front, okay? So you sustain a facial fracture, which is more interpersonal violences that are happening these days and that's the direct trauma that happens. Indirect trauma, you are involved in an accident, you get injured somewhere and also concomitant fractures are there with your facial bones like for example i try to punch you here nothing happens on the side that i'm punching but then your condyle on the opposite side fractures so that becomes an indirect trauma okay due to excessive muscular contraction that's because you have your mouth open and then you fall down okay you hit you now that god man's fracture where you know a person is standing for a long period of time and he has a sin curve and then he falls down lands on his chin and then he fractures his bilateral condyle so that's a god man fracture so that is now that's because he's landing on his chin and that indirectly he causes fracture to the bilateral condylar fragments now the basic classification of fractures when you look at in general surgery you know th there will be things like simple fracture where there's just a simple single bone that is being involved we have compound fractures multiple fragments, complex fractures in and out and comminuted fractures are completely shattered pieces. Now in children we call that green stick fracture because one side is bending, you know, if a fracture, this is the bone here and a fracture happens here, the other side bends, it does not fracture completely, it bends up. So that's called a green stick fracture. And if you have a pathological condition like a big huge cyst in the alveolar mandibular body, then there can be a fracture of the lower border of the mandible that can happen and that is called a pathological fracture. 
Okay. So, mandible fractures, you can classify them based on the type of fracture, the site where they are and the cause of the fracture. Now, we have Dingman and Natwick who's classified this based on the anatomy of the mandible. We know that's the condyle. Okay. Now, I'm not going into the detail of the condyle over here because condylar fracture in itself is a huge topic and we'll talk about it in a separate R. So, that's the condylar fracture, the coronoid process of coronoid fracture. So, that's the ramus. You have an horizontal ramus fracture here. That's the angle. So, that's the angular, okay, mandibular angle fracture. So, that's the body of the mandible, okay. So, this is the ramus and this is the body of the mandible. So, that is your body fracture and this is going into the central region. If it is exactly in the, in the central region, we call that as a symphysis fracture. If it comes on the lateral aspect of the symphysis, paralateral, parasymphysis fracture. So, that's your parasymphysis fracture there, all right. So, that's about Dingman and Natwick's anatomic classification. This you should know anatomic classification, even in your sleep, a summary wakes you up and asks you, can you classify mandibular fractures? The first thing that should come into your mind is, okay, based on the anatomy of the mandible, I can classify that, okay? And who devised it? Devised by Dingman and Nat.